Shalom. All praises, honor, and glorification unto our mighty, marvelous, and wonderful power. Call Halim La Alahayanawa Yehawa Bahashim, Yehawa Shai Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, whom rule well, and who are great examples to our younger brethren, <clears throat> and also whom I have learned this truth from. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto the hopeful elect of Yahweh Bashimi Awashai scattered across the earth. This is your brother Ayla coming to you with another lesson. And the title of this lesson will be For Where Your Treasure Is, There Will Your Heart Be Also. Where's Your Treasure? <clears throat> right? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your treasure? Right, you know, so Lord willing, the elect of Yahweh by Shemi, I wish I'd be edified, and also Lord willing, this lesson will be a quick hit and straight to the point. So let's get right into it. Right, let's start off at the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 21st verse. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I'll start at uh. I'll start at 19, and it reads, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See, and the heart is talking about the mind. See, so the things that you treasure, those are the things that your mind is, for the most part, going to be upon, you know. <clears throat> and see, our mind is to be focused upon things of true significance, right? Heavenly things, right? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, our purpose, this truth, the kingdom, the ministry, so on and so forth, right? Self-improvement. Right? You see? So once again, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <clears throat> right? So let me get into that word treasure. Uh, so let me pull up this in a blue letter. My right, treasure. Tight. See, it says riches, valuables. See, <clears throat> right, gym, place great value upon prize. See. Right. <clears throat> so continuing on, let me see. Uh, let me get Luke the twelfth chapter going into the same thing. I just think it's worded a bit differently. Luke chapter twelve and verse thirty-four, <clears throat> and it reads. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See? So once again, man, you know, the things that you treasure, those are the things that, for the most part, your mind is going to be upon. And see, we're not to treasure things here upon earth. Our treasure is to be in heaven, as well as our mind to be upon heavenly, heavenly things and spiritual things. Right? And that, that leads me to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Starting at verse 5 in Salakia for that noise in the background. Uh, it reads, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. See? But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of the Most High dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of the anointed, he is none of his. And if the anointed be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Yahushai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up the anointed from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. See? So the point is, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Right? See? So now let me get the book of Colossians, the third chapter. Verse 1 is where I'll start. And it reads, If ye then be risen with the anointed, seek those things which are above, where the anointed sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. See? See that? Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So let's get into that word affection. All right, verse two. Hold tight. You see, it says love, um, attachment, care. Devotion, closeness, uh, regard, respect, so on and so forth. <clears throat> right? So set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. As a matter of fact, land back it off that. Let me get this, Second Timothy 2 and 3. And it reads, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Hamashiach. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs, right, meaning the cares of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. See that? So we're not to be entangled with the affairs of this life, but rather with the affairs of heaven and, the, you know, heavenly affairs, spiritual affairs, right, significant affairs. <clears throat> Verse 5, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And I want to, matter of fact, I got a few things I want to do, hold tight. Since I'm already here, let me do it. Uh, six, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3 in the NLT, right? I'll read verse 4, <clears throat> just, just to get straight to the point. I'll read the whole thing. It reads, uh, Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yehoshai. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them, and athletes cannot win the prize unless they follow the rules. See? And I want to get, uh, I believe that was what, Matthew 6 and 21, and NLT as well. And it reads, uh, where so see that wherever your treasure is there the desires of your heart will also be see that see and what are we to desire we're to be looking for and hasting the coming of our lord yahweh shai and we're to be looking for the establishment of the kingdom of yahweh by shimei see pursuant to the book of matthew 6 and 33 um, what's that other one? Damn, and I want to get that too. Uh, Second Peter 3 and 13, if I'm not mistaken. But let's get this, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And it reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See? Right? Let me, uh, 
Let me get this as well. Second Peter 3 and 13. And it reads, you know what? I'll start up a bit. I'll start at 10. And it reads, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And the wish to heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. See? Right? And that, that's what we're looking for, man. And as you see, noted, it says, the we is talking about the nation of Yasharala, beginning with the elect, right? See? And, you know, just, you know, a little side note, there are certain characteristics and traits that the elect would contain that when you read about, you can, you know, apply to yourself within the process of self-examination. Like, are you doing what the elect will be doing in this time? Is your mind upon the things that the elect, the, is your mind upon the things that uh, the, the minds of the elect will be upon? So on and so forth, right? Let me get that again. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, verse 13, nevertheless, we, right? You know, and once again, that we is talking about the nation of Israel beginning with the elect. So the minds of the elect will be looking for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, showing you what? Their mind wouldn't be upon this present kingdom, right? And all, you know, furthermore, they'd be looking for the downfall of this present kingdom, right? Because as the saying goes, two kings can't sit on one throne. So before, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is established, this current kingdom has to be taken out. And those are the things that we ought to look for and that the elect would be looking for, right? So let's see. Um, let's get 2 Timothy 4 and 7. And I'm getting ready to close out. I'm just getting a few more finishing scriptures. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Right? That's another thing that our mind ought to be upon as well. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And that's, you know, one of the main treasures. See? Right? The scriptures also talk about receiving a crown from the Lord's hand. I believe that's in the book of Edris, either first or second, right? So, you know, uh, I'll close out with this. Uh, Proverbs 4 and 25. And it reads, Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee, right? Going into containing a tunnel vision which we indeed ought to contain, right? And at the end of that tunnel, or within that vision, right? Within that tunnel vision and at the end of that tunnel would be the things that we ought to be focused upon. See? The, once again, the kingdom. Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh our purpose, the ministry, right? Prophecy righteousness, so on and so forth. So with that, Lord willing, you were edified once again and forever, all praises, honor, and glorification unto our power. Ko halayim la alahayin nawa yehawa ba'ashimi awashai ba'ashimu ka'kwadash. Salutations as well as health and wellness unto you since your akim and few since your akwath. Um, see you in the next lesson, Lord willing. Wa yehawa ba'ashimi awashai ba'bukasha ababa Wa shalom, DTA soon. And, you know, stay sharp, keep pushing, and keep watching as well as praying. Shalom. Wa barakatam.